So here were the limitations. One is they had to they had to use Rudolph, obviously. Okay. Um, they also had to use their creative discipline. So whatever it is that they do um, as a creative person, we contacted them and said, "Hey, can you do that thing for us?" And most of them said yes. Some said no. We'll get them next year. Um, the other limitations are they had um, their, their presentations divided into two parts. The first 10 slides is the story. So this whole thing is not the, the Rudolph story, it's just the first 10 slides. The second 10 slides are the, uh, their process. So they're gonna tell you how they solved this problem, which is the part that I was most excited about. Because as a teacher, I really like seeing students um, work through a problem. And I think as creative people, you are gonna learn quite a bit from seeing how these people solve this problem. It also gave them uh, only half of the time to make something, so they were more likely to say yes. So uh, the Rudolph story is three and a half minutes, and then the whole thing is six minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, the last limitations are, um, they had four slides that they had to cover. The first one is a title slide. Um, the fourth slide had to have Santa on it. The seventh slide had to have all the other reindeer. And the tenth slide has to have Rudolph and his, his nose shining. So that's what we told them. All 10 of these pre presentations came together sort of on their own, and they're all brilliant. I'm just really excited about what's about to happen. So, did I cover everything, Jake? Bingo. Yeah, Jake says bingo. Okay, okay. So, up next is Liz Noser, who is a green card designer. This is really cool. She has some friends who are sitting over here. <laughs> uh, Liz graduated with a BFA in scenic and properties design from Missouri State University. She is currently getting ready to launch an online shop and blog with one of her closest friends. The shop will offer a variety of goods from homemade dresses to hand-printed greeting cards, conveniently enough. All right, Liz Noser. Like he said, my name's Liz. Um, if you have any interest in checking out the online shop, it'll be launching mid-January. It's going to be called This Once Was. I'd love for you to see it. Um, I'll be honest. I did this on Sunday night and haven't looked at it since. Um, <laughs> this is Rudolph. He is the guest of honor at today's event. Um, when exploring the story, and I'll go more into detail as I talk about the process, I really didn't know how to express the sentiment of a greeting card and tell the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So this first one was Silent Night, um, and it introduces Rudolph, and then we see him now in Blue Christmas. He's a little bit chubby. Um, it's because he put on his winter weight, but that's fine. <laughs> He, he's happy. He's a, well, actually he's not, but he will be. <laughs> and then all I want for Christmas is you. He dreams about the day he'll meet Santa Claus because, I mean, that is the ideal for a reindeer. <laughs> so, just ponders about it. <laughs> One goes too fast, the other goes too slow. Okay, so do you hear what I hear? The announcement is made that the journey of Christmas Eve can't happen because it is too foggy outside, it's snowing too hard, and they just can't do it. So they're looking for a solution, and he's Santa Claus is coming to Rudolph's town, and here he is. That's Santa Claus in all his glory, and Rudolph is beyond excited. So this is when we start to see the story pick up. Things are turning in his direction. He's really excited, as he should be, because who isn't excited to see Santa? I mean, millions of kids do it. Go to the mall every year for him. So then we have, have yourself a merry little Christmas. We see Rudolph's shiny nose from across the room, and Santa knows immediately what the solution is. His red glowing nose will be able to guide his sleigh that very night. So he asks Rudolph, Will you join me? Of course, that makes his Christmas. And he's so happy, he literally glows. So, he's having himself a holly jolly Christmas. He 
is so excited to be a part of the eight reindeer, which I realized later he would be the ninth, which is not accurately portrayed in the future card. <laughs> I apologize about that. <laughs> so then it's the night before Christmas, and he starts to get his nerves, very similar to how I felt tonight. Um, and he, he starts to second guess himself, but Santa, of course, reassures him that I picked you for a reason and that you are here for a purpose, which is a great lesson to learn. And he remembers, I'll be home for Christmas, which is important because the North Pole has become his home. He has his family that loves him. He's learning his self-worth. Um, so when all is said and done, he wants to come home for Christmas. And then joy to the world. He has the opportunity to bring joy to the world. He gets to deliver the gifts of all the little boys and girls throughout the world, and he really is living out the dream, and he's very excited. So, there's that last one. All right, so I talked about the difficulty of expressing a sentiment and telling a story at the same time. So the definition of a sentiment is a view or attitude towards a situation or an event. Um, but how do you tell the story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and still express some sort of message individually as you're doing it? Um, so I, I design cards um, for different events I've done. Wedding invitations, um, I have Mother's Day cards, Father's Day cards, thank you cards. I've always loved Cards. I'm not, uh, I do not express love physically, I'm not a hugger. <laughs> I, so, um, cards have always been a way for me to express myself by simply saying the words to someone. So, storytelling is conveying the events and words through images. So, that's where my degree of scenic design comes into place. I researched some vintage cards, because that's the era I wish I was born into. So these are some of the cards that really inspired me in the style of the greeting cards I made. I like that they're simple, but they still express the simple sentiment of Merry Christmas. So that's where my idea went. I want everyone to explicitly say Merry Christmas, even if that's not what the word says. Um, this is vintage postcards, which was the inspiration for my font, which is a little bit, you know, more scrolly than some other fonts. But when thinking about the different words, um, this is my scratch board, my idea board, which is a huge mess. But I went through all of my favorite Christmas songs and saw that there was some sort of theme to a mood that those Christmas songs set. So I was able to tell the story of Rudolph by simply the title of another Christmas song, which between the imagery of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the titles of well-known Christmas songs, to me, and hopefully to you as well, it says, Merry Christmas. Um, some little details that I did, they're all hand-painted. I do not know how to use a computer. I do apologize for my PowerPoint presentation. But I am old-world craftsman. I do everything by hand, including sewing. Um, so, some of the ideas that I wanted to do that are a little bit more subtle is, you might have noticed the grayscale of my presentation throughout of it. And it talks about the darkness that he feels at the beginning and how it progressively gets happier. Um, so that was just a small design choice I made. I really wanted them to be co coherent and uh, cohesive. So, all together, these are my cards. I hope they express the sentiment I was trying to express, which is Merry Christmas.